Hey everybody, this video is going to go over the third essay that you were asked to read in the week seven module in the arguing cause um, lesson. So this is for the arguing cause exercise, the simple essay. And this video is going to cover the essay more than cherry. Um, I really liked all three essays that um, that we read for that exercise, the arguing cause essays. Um, I thought the one on no sex, please, the middle class, uh, was, um, almost sarcastic in a way. She was really driving home a point and you could tell she, there was, uh, she, there was some feelings. <laughs> um, I loved the second one, disparity demystified. I think it is such an important topic to be discussed. This essay though, more than cherries for some way, for some reason, really gets to me. Um, so I hope you guys were able to um, resonate with it a little bit as well. So the first question that you were asked to answer about the essay, though, is um, summarize the series of causes that she gives in her argument. And it's actually pretty clear. I think this might be the clearest line of reasoning out of all three essays. Um, and yet, even though it is so crystal clear to me, I feel like she does it in such a way that it's it's just very natural and you don't even realize that she has walked you through her line of reasoning until you get to a certain point in the essay and you're like, oh, okay, now I see what you were doing. <laughs> um, but when you go back and look to see what she was doing, it's like, how did I miss it? How did I miss that she was connecting all of these things? Um, she just does it so naturally but as far as her line of reasoning goes her the, the series of causes that she discusses so we have this young girl who was diagnosed with cancer and ultimately died she grew up in you know cherry country and the author is very interested in finding out what could have been the underlying cause of this very young healthy girl dying of cancer so her series of causes, the Cherry Festival there, which used to be a very small town celebration over the years, became this huge national corporate sponsored multi-million dollar extravaganza. That put more pressure on the local farmers to produce enough cherries, enough quality cherries in time for the festival, which led them to start using more um, pesticides and fertilizers. Pesticides and fertilizers contain harmful components linked to certain cancers and other health problems. Children are most vulnerable and affected by these problems, these cancers and problems. And Lauren Hemming grew up on a big cherry farm in this area. Brings it all the way back around to the cherry farms, right? It's a very clear series of causes, but yet she doesn't make it sound like it's a series of causes, right? Um, the second question says to ask you to describe the use of appeals throughout the essay. Um, so we'll look at logic first. Um, I think her whole line of reasoning as she lays out the chain of causes is very much logic, especially when she really gets into, um, the pesticides and fertilizers, you know, she really has to use some science and facts to help back that up. Um, so there's, uh, a good bit of the argument actually does hinge on logos, on logic. Um, her, the, she touches on ethos, you know, character, she, all the experts and officials that she uh, refers to and quotes throughout the essay. Um, there is a lot of appeals to value, a lot of pathos. Um, if we talk about pathos in terms of what we value, appealing to our appealing to value. Um, you know, what we hold dear to us, there's uh, how we value community, doing what's right for your community, not just yourself. Um, 
our uh, how we value nature, um, how we value responsibility, taking responsibility, being responsible, acting responsibly, how we value integrity, doing the right thing, even when it's not easy, <laughs> um, how we value knowledge, right? Knowing the truth. Um, there's definitely appeals to emotion, the other part of pathos. Uh, that whole, the, the, the paragraph or two where she talks about Lauren, you know, she obviously, uh, she, I don't think she overdoes it. Um, I mean, she definitely could have just bombarded those paragraphs with a lot of sympathetic, emotional language. Um, and I think she holds off a little bit with that, but it's definitely, um, an appeal to our emotions, thinking about this very young girl, uh, who was set to be the cherry queen or whatever cherry princess and um the language used to describe the effects of the chemicals um she talks about the children being vulnerable the dangers of exposure the harsh chemicals so there's a very um significant uh, i don't want to say miss or underlying because i don't think she's trying to hide it but uh, there's definitely an appeal to fear as well. I don't think that's her primary motivation. I don't think she wants to I don't, I, I induce panic <laughs> or anything like that. But I think she does want to add an ounce of it in there because we do need, at least in her opinion, we do need to feel some sense of, of fear, some sense of urgency. Um, so... She has the emotional appeals with the description of Lauren and then the language that she uses to kind of spark a little bit of fear. So she really hits on almost every kind of appeal you could use, um, which I think is one of the things that makes it such a well-rounded argument um, is that she does not rely on one type of supporting um, strategy to get her point across. She incorporates a lot of them and she integrates them very smoothly and it all seems to work. Um, the next question asked you about the fact that she uses the personal pronoun I in certain portions of the essay, that she inserts herself into the essay. And, you know, why do you think she does that? What effect does it have on the argument? Um, I think part of it is that she's being honest in her pursuit of knowledge. And she's being honest in how she wants to portray what she found, her findings. Um, she was on a journey. She was on a quest. And... Um, you know, she was looking for information and hopefully answers. And she wants to make it personal so we feel like we're on the journey with her. That maybe if we feel like we're with her, like if it's personal, then we will want the information and the answers just as much as she does. Um, I think it also makes it seem less accusatory you know, like she's not shoving this down our throats because even though this isn't a hot topic, it parts of it are. Um, and so I think knowing that a lot of people might just turn a deaf ear as soon as she starts talking about farming practices or whatnot, um, or cancer for that matter, you know, causes of cancer that, you know, they're gonna, they, they won't really read any further or she even if they read they're not going to really pay attention or listen to what she's saying that she will have lost them if she um makes it too formal and too accusatory the way she presents all of the information practically is really through her personal experience um and that makes it easier to read and follow along without getting our feathers too ruffled about where her findings are taking her in the essay. I just
just think that I think it makes it a little more palatable. Um, and then we end up a little more invested because we feel like we're right there with them. Um, the next question asked, uh, you know, even though the topic doesn't seem to be a, a very controversial issue, um, you know, she does have to consider mainstream values and assumptions about farming, about chemicals, about cancer. Um, and so it asks you to describe how she deals with common ways of thinking about those issues. And how do common values and assumptions figure into her argument? Um, well, I think she knows <laughs> that there will be a lot of people in America who, while they may feel a smidge of sympathy or empathy, towards Lauren and her family and the other families in this area, that they will value money over anything else. So she knows that um, there will be a lot of readers who still looking at the big picture are only going to care about the bottom line. Um, collateral damage be damned. Uh, so she has to walk a fine line there because if she gets to accusatory, she'll lose them. Um, I think she's also uh, appealing to our value for truth, but she has to walk a fine line there as well, because, the, the like I said earlier, her argument kind of hinges on the logic that she includes, um, which includes all of the, the facts and statistics and testimonies of the experts and, and, and officials. And there's you know, the science behind it, basically. And sadly, there are a lot of people out there who have a huge distrust of science right now. And so having so much of her argument hinge on the science, <laughs> she has to incorporate that in a way that doesn't turn those readers off. So it's an appeal to our uh, how we value truth and knowledge. And I think that goes back to the previous question of using that personal pronoun. You know, it really makes it seem like this is more just my own personal journey. I'm sharing with you. No big deal. Uh, okay, see you later. <laughs> you know, and what she's really hoping for is that, you know, we read about her journey and our eyes are opened, you know, but she doesn't want to pry them open. I mean, she probably does, but she knows that they work. <laughs> um, the last question asks, what is the most persuasive passage? Um, I happen to pick the whole middle section. Her, honestly, I don't even know if I could pick a most persuasive passage. I really feel like the whole thing is really good. Um, but I think the whole middle section where she walks us through the research is really spot on, but especially on page 157, um, almost every paragraph on page 157. And that's basically when she gets into how the chemicals specifically affect children, why they affect children differently than adults, and why children are at a higher risk of being exposed to the chemicals than adults. I think that's where she really clinches it. Because, <laughs> um, you know, we hear so much about everything that can cause cancer. You know, it's like everything. Uh, it's... So a lot of people would be like, okay, yeah, I get it. Like chemicals, pesticides, fertilizer, bad. But you know, what are we going to do? Like, everything's going to, I'm going to get cancer no matter what. <laughs> but we're thinking, you know, in our 70s and 80s, getting cancer. When she hones in on children, specifically, then we, I think a lot of people would open their eyes and their ears a little more. Because that is where 
the heart of her argument lies is okay fine we don't give a crap about ourselves we don't give a crap about our neighbors but damn it i know we give a crap about our kids <laughs> and here's what the research is showing you know don't ignore it you know listen and i think that's where she hits her most persuasive um section i would be interested to know that anybody else feels differently <laughs> uh because i i often wonder you know like um my own values and assumptions you know i'm a i'm a mom is is that influencing how persuasive i find her piece uh would i feel would i have felt differently 20 years ago reading an essay like this I don't know. but for me that is where she is the most persuasive is where she because she she keeps getting narrower and narrower with where she's taking the research that she's done and then she hones us in right on that that bullseye which is how it affects children um I'm very interested in the witness on that topic. Anywho, um, so that's the last of our three essays that offered an example of um, how to argue cause. Now, you may not end up having an argument of cause for your course project, and that's fine. <laughs> you are not required to have uh, a causal argument. If, however, your topic seems to be leading you in a direction where having a claim of cause would work for what you're trying to accomplish with the topic then it would be worth coming back to this unit coming back to week seven the week seven module and going through this material again and just really getting an even better understanding of how to arrange and present a causal argument because they probably are the most tricky. I don't want to dissuade anyone from doing a claim of clause, though, uh, because you need to do whatever works best for your particular topic and what you are hoping to accomplish with your topic. Um, so if that happens to lead you to a claim of cause, you know, hopefully um, the PowerPoint and the essays and the video lessons have helped, but they're here always for you to refer back to as you're working on the course project. If you guys have any additional questions or comments, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, you guys are free to move on.